What you can also do is you can nest the different rate levels. You can combine those rate levels and that looks as follows. So here's an example where I combined 1 and 0 and this is called 1 plus 0 or rate level 10. And you should read that from bottom to top. So at the bottom you have rate level 1 and then on top you have a rate level 0. You can basically understand that if you assume this is a black box. Let's say this is black box number 1, this is black box number 2. And what we had above was that the black box was a hard disk, a hard drive. So we had two hard drives. Black box number 1 was a hard drive, black box number 2 was a hard drive. And over that we had rate 0, which means we striped the blocks over the different devices. Block 1 goes here, block 2 goes there, block 3 goes here, and so forth. It's the same thing happening here. Block 1 is stored in this black box, so to say. But inside, in the black box, we implement the black box using a rate level 1 again. So we ha here we have two hard drives and we store block 1 on both of the hard drives. And that happens for all of the odd blocks here. All the even blocks go here to black box number 2 using rate level 1 again with two drives. So we have all the even blocks here and we have the disks mirrored and we have the odd blocks here with mirrored disks meaning rate 1. So with respect to read performance, assume you want to read all of the blocks. In such a configuration you get four times the read performance. Four times the read performance. Why? Because, assume, I mean, you can read, for example, this, 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 and this in parallel. With a single operation, so you get four times the read performance. So what about write performance? Assume we want to store two blocks, two new blocks, block 9 and 10. Well, 9 goes to this black box, 10 goes to that black box, which means we write block 9 here and block 10 here. So we have the same property as in the standard rate. We have twice the write performance as blocks 9 and 10 can be written out in parallel. So here block 9 can be written out in parallel. However, both disks have to write it. So we have to put it here and we have to put it here and block 10 goes here and block 10 goes here of course. So here inside the black boxes we don't gain anything but across the boxes we have like two times the right performance. Okay, what about failure rates? Here we inherit the properties of the individual rate levels. As you remember, in rate zero, if you lose any of the black boxes, so to say, you lose some of the data. So whatever happens, we have to make sure that we don't lose an entire black box. And that only happens if you lose both devices here in this situation. That may happen. In this configuration it's possible that we lose this device here. Yeah, that's okay. We can also lose one of those. That's okay at the same time and the system will still work. However, assume we lose both devices inside the black box. Then of course we lose all the odd blocks and then we will lose half of the data. So it's a similar property as in the standard rate zero configuration. So for some situations where you lose two devices, you still have all the data. For some situations where you lose two of the devices, you lose half of the data in such a configuration. Okay, if you can do a one plus zero, you can of course also do a zero plus one and that's how it looks like. So basically I'm swapping the roles here of the different nests and what this means those two disks are exchanged. So I end up with this situation and here what I do is again I have black boxes as before but now they have different data so again I give them numbers let's say this is four. So what I do is if this is a black box you remember rate one mirrors the contents of the different black boxes which means black box number three has the same data as black box number four. Let's write it down. 3 is equivalent to 4 with respect to the data it contains. Then inside a black box all the data has to be stored and that is done by using RAID 0 again. So in RAID 0 you remember you stripe the data over the different 
this, which means block 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Same thing here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. What does this mean for read performance? Very similar to a rate 1 plus 0, you can send requests in parallel. Yeah, you can read block 1, block 3 here, 5, 7 there, 2, 4 here, and 6, 8 there. All of this can be done in parallel, which means you have four times the read performance. And similar to 1 plus 0, in 0 plus 1, you have two times the write performance. Why? So if you want to write anything, let's say again blocks number 9 and blo block number 10, what do we do? Block number 9 goes here and there. So we have to write block 9 here and there. So we have to write it twice. And the same holds for block number 10. We have to write it here and we have to write it here in parallel. So which means the logical blocks 9 and 10 can be written in parallel, but as each of the blocks has to be written twice, we only gain two times the right performance. So with respect to the number of disk failures you can survive in the two different nesting levels here, they have very similar properties. So if it's one hard disk failing, you immediately see there's no difference. If it's two hard disk failing, it again depends on which of the hard disks are failing. As we have seen before in this rate level 1 plus 0, if you lose both of the hard disks in a black box, then you lose some of the data. In a rate 0 plus 1 configuration, if you lose an entire black box, which means both of those hard drives, of course, you can still go to another black box. What may still happen in this configuration is you lose two hard disks in different black boxes. Say you lose this one and this one. And then, of course, you would lose half of the data. So similar to a RAID 0 plus 1 configuration. So there are many more RAID configurations and subtilities. We will discuss some of them in the lab and in the exercises. However, for the moment, keep in mind the levels 0, 1, 5, and 6, they are kind of important and you will run into them frequently. If you liked this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you. So if you want to see more database videos, be it in English or in German, take a look at my website datenbankenlernen.de. It has a couple of English and German videos. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel, Jens Did, or you look at our website, infosys.uni-saarland.de. See you there.